Hello, and welcome to part 3 of converting my Santa's present drop game into Amos. In part 2, we worked on the foreground scrolling. We also added the various bonuses, and then combined the whole thing with the background layer. In this part, we're going to look at using hardware sprites for Santa and the presents that get dropped. Once we have that working, we'll look at collision detection. Before we start working with hardware sprites, it's probably best to understand what they are and how they work. Hardware sprites represent a graphic that's usually overlaid in front of everything else, for example the mouse cursor. The Amiga's hardware only allows 8 4-colour hardware sprites on screen at a time, or 4 16-colour sprites, or combinations of the two. Each sprite can't be any wider than 16 pixels. This may sound surprisingly limited, but there's many tricks you can use to get past this. And one of the main tricks used is to reprogram the sprite as the screen is being drawn, giving the illusion of more than 8 sprites on screen at a time. The game Shadow of the Beast uses all kinds of tricks including this to show its graphics. We are however, restricted to what Amos provides us. But Amos will help us with some of these things. For example, if I want to show a sprite that's 32 pixels wide, it will automatically join two together. It also allows you to use 56 computed sprites. Each sprite can be a maximum of 64 pixels wide, have 16 colours, and be a maximum of 270 pixels high. This is permitted as long as you follow this rule. If for any row on screen that rule is not met, strange things start to happen. So let's have a look at creating these sprites. But first, many times I've mentioned a screen having a restriction of 8 colours, or a sprite having a restriction of 16 colours, but what does that mean? These days, we're all used to screens that can display any amount of colours on screen at a time. However, with the exception of some special modes, our colour choices are a lot smaller. The way this works is, if you have a screen that has a maximum of 8 colours, you define your 8 colour palette. Then for every pixel on the screen, you tell the Amiga which of those colours you'd like to use. This does allow for some rather interesting effects if you were to cycle these colours. But we don't need any of that. Our current dual play field uses 8 colours for the foreground layer, and a separate 8 colours for the background layer. So what about the sprites? Well a 16 colour sprite occupies another 16 colours after the first two sets of 8. This sounds straightforward enough. 4 colour sprites however are a little different. The colour palette they use very much depends on which hardware sprite you're using. For example, hardware sprite 0 and 1 use colours 16 to 19. 16 being transparent. Sprite 2 and 3 uses colours 20 to 23, again with colour 20 being transparent, and so on. This means choosing the colours for your sprites can be quite complex. However, the rewards of having additional colours on screen, as well as them being drawn by hardware, are very beneficial. So let's take a look at the sprite sheet and see what our sprites look like currently. We'll start with Santa on his sleigh. Currently, Santa is 103 pixels wide. We'll assume that he's going to be 16 colours. Based on the rules for sprites we've been given, that's too big. The maximum width we could hope to get for a 16 colour sprite is 64 pixels. But we also don't want to throw away all of our 8 sprites in one go. So let's take the Santa image and see if we can get him down to 64 pixels wide. So we've lost a reindeer, but that doesn't matter. He's now 64 pixels wide. But that would still use up all of our available sprites. If we take a look at this sprite, and break it down into 16 pixel sprites, there's some further optimizations we can make. If you look at the two reindeers on the right, they don't actually use many colours at all, so maybe they could end up being 4 colour sprites instead. We can ignore the first 16 colours as sprites don't use them, so let's have a look at Santa. If we take the left 32 pixels of Santa, being a 16 colour sprite, it will actually occupy sprites 0, 1, 2 and 3. And because it's a 16 colour sprite, we can sort out its palette. Then we come on to the two reindeers. They're going to be a 4 colour sprite. I carefully selected the palette for Santa, so that the colours for the reindeer were in this range, making them available to sprite 4 and 5. We will end up saving this out as a 16 colour image, starting from colour 16. However, to capture the 4 colour sprites, they need to be saved as 4 colour images. So for the purpose of this file, we'll remap those into these colours. Now onto the presents. These are going to be displayed using sprite 6 and 7. As the first colour is transparent, that really only leaves us three different colours. So my plan is to make all the presents the same colour, 
and each time a present is dropped, if there's none on screen, we'll change the colour palette so it looks like there's lots of different coloured presents. And finally, these will also need saving as four colour images too, so we have to remap them much like we did the reindeers. So you can see setting up the sprites isn't straightforward, and your selection of colours has to be very carefully chosen as they're tied to the hardware. So now we've got these images, let's capture them in Amos. We'll start by loading the IFF file, and then we'll capture the left hand side of Santa. Now rather than having a separate four colour file, I'm simply going to open a four colour screen and copy the image onto it. Then I can start grabbing the four colour sprites. First we grab the right hand side of the reindeers, and then finally the four present images. Then we're going to test the sprites by setting the palette and placing them all on screen. Let's see what that looks like. And it works! So now we've captured our game sprites, we now need to start using them. The first thing we're going to do is simply overlay them over the top of our dual playfield. First we'll start by updating the program to support the new colour palette. Then we'll create a function that each time you call it changes the colours of the presents. Then finally we copy the code from our capture sprites program just to draw them on screen. And then we run it and see what happens. Hmm, not quite what we expected. It could well be with the dual play field going and the computed sprites that we are just pushing Amos to its limits. So how can we work around this? Well it seems a little bit silly, but if we use two sprites for each present the problem goes away. Now you may have noticed if you look at the code, the positions of the sprites don't seem to make much sense. This is because the position of hardware sprites is independent from what's actually on screen. Take this screenshot for example. This screen has a resolution that's twice as wide as it is high, which means the upper left hand corner of the window in hardware coordinates is 50 by 128, but inside the screen that's 0, 0. Then we look at the mouse cursor, and we can see that there's some very strange things going on with the positions there. Luckily we don't have to worry about this. Amos provides functions to convert between screen and hardware coordinates, and because we're using a low resolution screen, one is merely an offset from the other, the exception being when we scroll the screen, because obviously then the top left hand corner is moving too. Back to Amos, naturally the position of the mouse cursor is reported as hardware coordinates, so we can take those and simply apply them to the sprites directly. But before the game starts, we'll restrict the mouse's movements to within the screen, allowing for Santa's size, and then reset the current mouse coordinates to the top left hand corner. And now when we run it we get this. Seems to be fine. Now let's work on making the presents drop when we click the mouse. So the first thing we need to do is create an array so we can track these presents on screen. Then we create a new procedure. This procedure expects X and Y coordinates for where the presents should be dropped from. Then we loop through our array, looking for an entry that isn't in use. We populate that entry with the correct details. We then pick a random present image, and place that sprite on screen. While searching for an empty array position, we keep track of how many other presents are actually on screen, and if it turns out there aren't any, we change the palette used by the presents. Next we make a procedure to actually move these presents. Again we start by looping through, looking for presents that are actually on screen. If a sprite has gone past the bottom of the screen, we turn it off. If not, we move it downwards and update the sprite. And finally we update the main loop. Firstly we add some code to detect when the mouse button's pressed down. Then we call our drop presents procedure, and then finally call our move presence procedure. So let's run that and see it all in action. Seems to work okay. The thing is, the Amiga's a multitasking computer, and we aren't really making best use of its hardware, so what else can be done? Well what if we could take the movement animations completely out of the main loop and let them run on their own? This is actually quite easy to do in Amos. Amos includes a special language called AML, or Amos Animation Language. I'm not going to go into too much detail because that would warrant a video of its own. If that's something you'd like to see, leave a message in the comments below. Simply put, AML allows you to run a whole sequence of events in the background completely independent from your main program. We'll start by updating the code so Santa's moved using AML instead. AML programs are assembled as strings of text commands. Anything in lowercase is completely ignored. We're going to use the auto test mode in AML. Essentially what this does is rather than loop continuously, 
It only executes part of your program if an event happens. In this case, if Santa moves or the current frame changes. The second AML script is for the second sprite, used to move the reindeers. We assign an AML channel to a sprite, then we assign the AML animation, and then finally turn it on. That's it. And if we run this, we'll see that it looks exactly the same. It almost seems pointless, but we are taking some of the load off the main loop. This helps make the main loop run more smoothly. Well, what about the presents? Well, we update our drop presents procedure, and include the AML animation. This one just keeps increasing the position of the present until it drops off the bottom of the screen. And finally, we change our procedure that monitors the presence just to turn the animation off when it's finished. And once again we run this, and it looks the same. But once again, we've taken some load off the main program. So it's all very good having these animations, but we actually need to make them interact with the rest of the game. This means we need to add collision detection. There's numerous ways we can do this, and Amos provides several alternatives. However, most of those are to do with collisions between sprites or between blitter objects. We want to do collisions with the screen. This is something the Amiga hardware can do natively for us, but it's fairly complex to do, and would probably require us to shuffle the pallets around again, so we're not going to use that. The first thing I want to test for is for Santa colliding with any of the bonuses, so we make a new procedure specifically for monitoring Santa. We calculate the centre of Santa's position in screen coordinates. Then we loop through looking for any active bonuses, and if we find one that overlaps with us, we remove it from the screen. Now knowing that we're not touching any of the bonuses, the next thing we need to do is see if Santa's actually collided with any of the houses. We're simply going to have a look and see what the colours of the pixels are around Santa, and if any of them aren't zero, i.e. transparent, we'll assume he's touched something. If he did hit something, we'll return that. Next, we'll take a look at the presents. We already have a function that's watching the presence, so all we need to do is for every active present, we need to see if it collides with the top of any active chimneys. If it collides, we remove it. Then finally, we update the main loop to check these things. And if we run that, you'll see that if a present hits the top of a chimney, it disappears. And if Santa crashes into something, the game ends. One thing you may not have noticed is that when there are several presents on screen, the game appears to slow down quite considerably. This is caused by having lots of loops inside each other. In this case, the loop looking through all the presents that then looks through all the chimneys. It would be nice if we could remove one of those loops. Well, we can. Amos allows you to define rectangles on screen, known as zones, and you can ask it what zone number is under a particular coordinate. So we update our code to create zones around the top of the chimneys, making sure they're clipped to the size of the screen. Then we update the code that tracks the positions of these chimneys to remove the zone once the chimney's gone off the screen. Then we update our function that monitors the presence to ask what zone number is under the sprite for that present. That's a far simpler and more efficient way to do this, mainly because the code for those will be in assembly language inside Amos. Now if we run it, we'll see that it runs a little bit smoother. That's some good progress in this game, starting to look real now. Next time, we're going to spend some time having a look at the scores, the game time, music and sound effects, and generally finishing off the game. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving the video a like, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel, and how about supporting me on Patreon. I'll see you next time.